right, so let's go ahead and knock this one out. We're going we're gonna to do a recap. We're going to do a recap on everything that I read and go back through this. All right. So Tim is being evaluated by physical therapy for functional decline and poor blood uh, sugar control. Now, upon examination, the therapist finds multiple pressure ulcers on the patient's plantar surfaces. However, the patient seems unaware. Which of the following, or I should say which monofilament, would best confirm the reasoning for the observed wounds? So back again, 5.0 with the 10 gram monofilament, 4.171 gram. C is 1.171 gram, and D is 8.0710 grams. So what's the answer here? Let's come up to the top. This is where we left off. We are talking about, all right, we have this patient coming into us, functional decline, poor blood sugar control. What does that mean to you? You know, Ileana, what does that mean to you? Israel, what does that mean to you? I mean, when you see poor blood sugar control in a patient, what kind of like lights off in your head? What are you thinking about? You should be thinking about somebody who has diabetes, right? Because that's like the number one condition that's really prevalent in, in PT. I mean, when you get out in the field, the majority of your patients have some level of diabetes for the most part, all right? And the one thing that they have a problem with doing is controlling their blood sugar, all right? So that's where my mind's already at before we even get down into the meat of the question. Y'all with me? So let's get down. I see you, Trent. So let's get down into the meat of this. It says, upon examination, the therapist finds multiple pressure ulcers on the plantar surfaces. All right, plantar surfaces of the feet. However, the patient seems unaware. Now, I mean, can you imagine having multiple ulcers on the bottom of your feet? Wouldn't that be pretty got darn painful? So the fact that the patient has multiple pressure ulcers there and it's and the patient's not aware of them, it really raises some red flags. Now, we know that diabetic peripheral neuropathy is a thing. All right. And it's a very common uh, occurrence with patients who have diabetes. All right, and so what tends to happen is because of the excessive amount of sugar that's in their blood, I mean, they just rapidly just going up and down throughout each day. They're not controlling their sugar well. Well, that sugar starts to eat away at not just the bones, baby. The sugar eats away at also the, the, the blood vessels and the nerves. So what do we end up with? We end up with difficulty with sensation, numbness, tingling, all that good stuff, right? We end up with problems like uh, 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 gangrene and necrosis and amputation. Why? Because these, th this level of sugar in the blood for prolonged periods can start to cause damage to not only the nerves, but to the blood vessels as well. So with this patient, I'm already leading into this, like, oh, this patient has diabetic peripheral neuropathy. He's not feeling very well. And so one of the strategies that we could use in PT is this idea of the monofilament. And that's what our question stem says here is, which monofilament would best confirm the reasoning for pretty much why we're seeing these wounds? What could, would confirm that? So monofilament testing is something that we use as PTs in order to determine if a patient has normal sensation, if they have protective sensation, all right? So we're really trying to figure that out because that lets us know what our education needs to be, our treatment needs to be, and so forth. All right, am I speaking truth, AB? Levine, I see you, Kylie, tonight. All right, so here's the deal. We have these monofilaments. Now, a, B, C, and D are obviously monofilament uh, different grades. All right, the monofilaments that we use, it's actually supposed to be a perpendicular motion where we're pushing in this. It's not a, it's not a string at all. Like when you look at it, it's actually a pretty firm piece. All right, but you pushing it in the filament into the patient and we're supposed to push it until we see the bending of it. All right, why is that important? Why is that important? Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to test how much force the patient is able to feel. There's two major numbers that we need to know. So let's start off with A. A is 5.07 10 gram monofilament. The first question is, what does that really mean to us right now? Well, I'll tell you this, that the two levels of 
uh, of uh, testing that we're going to be doing is at the 10 gram level and at the one gram level. 5.07 is known as testing for protective sensation. 5.07 or the 10 gram monofilament is testing for protective sensation. So really what, what's happening is we're pushing in this monofilament into the, the foot, the plantar surface of the foot in this case. And when we get that bending, we know that we're putting forth 10 grams of force. Now, if our patient can feel it, we know that they have protective sensation. If our patient can't feel it, we know that they don't have protective sensation, meaning that they are not able to feel when certain things are causing damage, whether that's a rock in the shoe or whatever that's actually causing damage to the skin, that person's not able to sense that. So does that not fit exactly with what we're talking about here? It's exactly what we want to do. We will want to use the 5.0, uh, 5.07 10 gram monofilament to test if our patient has protective sensation. Yeah, that fits. All right. So I'll go ahead. I like A. A fits. But as always, don't leave me yet. Stay tuned in because we always want to make sure that the remaining answers are not more correct. Or the better answer. All right. So let's look at B. B is 4.17. That's the other number that I need you all to really remember. All right. 4.17. And I need you to remember that because that is testing for normal sensation. It's at the one gram level. Right. So when we test this type of person with, with uh, one gram, he's not going to be able to fill this either. Because if he could, this would be normal sensation. That means he would have protective sensation and he would have normal sensation. All right. But the fact that he tests negative with this monofilament, that doesn't really let me know whether he has protective sensation or not. All it's telling me is that he can't feel normally, but that doesn't mean that he can't have protective sensation. So B can't be the answer. Yeah, B could be, you know, when we test them, he's like, nope, I can't feel that. But that doesn't let us know. That doesn't confirm why our patient is really getting these wounds. All right. So B, although, yeah, okay, could be an answer. It's not the best answer. All right, let's go to C. C says 1.17 one uh, gram monofilament. Okay, is this the truth? Is this true or not, baby? <laughs> Here's the deal. Here's the deal. The two numbers I told you that you had to remember, 5.07, 4.17, are the ones that correlate with 10 gram and 1 gram. All right? 5.07 goes with 10 gram. 4.17 is the 1 gram monofilament. 1.17 is not 1 gram of force. All right, y'all feel me? So the, the lower that you're going, the less force that we're going to be getting. So it can't be the one gram. It would have to be less than the one gram. So this ratio right here doesn't make sense. It's just not true. And so C is not going to be the right answer. And then uh, 8.07 and the 10 gram monofilament, while, you know, obviously that's a bigger monofilament that you'd be using, it does not correlate with 10 gram force. It would be much higher force if it was an 8.07. So the fact that we have these two numbers here, it just doesn't make sense. All right, it's untrue. And so C and D are also not true, leaving us with our final answer of A. A lot of you got this question correct. I love it, baby. I love it. One thing that you have to know about these types of questions, though, is that these numbers can be thrown at you a little bit different. They may say 5.07 on the exam, but what if they don't? What if they only say 10 gram? What if they say 1 gram? What if I completely took off all of the 5.07, the 4.17 and all that and just said 10, point, or 10 grams, 1 gram, 5 grams and so forth? This could easily change the question. So it's really important for you to make sure that you have an understanding of these numbers because you're going to have to be able to apply the stuff backwards and forwards when it comes to your actual MPTE. All right. Final answer is A. If you got this one, I want you to put a heart down. If you got this right and had the right rationale, 
That's what's important, baby. I want you to put a heart down. Let me freaking know, baby.